Good morning. It's Monday. Welcome back to the farm here. Hope you guys enjoyed that auction video. Something a little different. Change of pace. I mean, you watched it, so that's awesome. But uh, we're working on the corn planter here today. Back to this project. Uh, hopefully, we'll get it wrapped up this week and get this out of here. But I don't know. Depends on if all my parts come in time or not. So uh, I think first thing we're going to do this morning is have Brock work on putting these closing wheels back together. They'll put the, the, the part that bolts up under here back on so that we can get the uh, closing wheels mounted and um, then we can go from there. All right, so I've been kind of trying to figure out what to do about gauge wheel arms on this planter. I showed you that one last week and talked about why they're important or the different options that we have for repairing it and stuff, but they're not all that bad. Like this one here has, eh, that one's got a little bit, just a tiny little bit of play. Must be this one over here had none none but then i'll look at the one on like on the other side and there's a lot and so i'm trying to figure out do i just go through and do all of the arms do i uh, adjust them the best they can for right now and call it okay or do i replace a couple of them here and there that are the worst this one over here i think was the worst one i do have two new arms so i'm probably going to put those on where this one is uh, but most of them are really not that bad yet, and I'm probably just going to run them. I just want to go through and check all of them to make sure, I guess, is what I'm saying here. So, and then we got Brock did check the gap on most of the openers on Friday, and so we'll put a couple of blades back on and uh, get the row units wrapped up. After he gets some of them closing wheel arms or pieces back on, then we're going to get seed tubes out and wash those as well. Alright, so I'm going to kind of try and show you how we adjust these gauge wheel arms here. Um, they are, like I said, they're kind of a pain. So this one's fairly tight. It doesn't have much slop in it, but it's way out of adjustment. I know you can't see up here, but it's probably a good eighth of an inch, not quite a quarter of an inch, um, away from the opener blade, which we can't have. So I'm going to loosen up the bolt, and I'm going to take another wrench and start turning this bushing. And what that does is move the gauge wheel in tighter to the blade. Back in the right direction. And I got my knee under it trying to lift this wheel up because that's where it's going to be when we're planting. And because this is threaded and it's pivoting on threads, when it goes up and down, it's going to move closer or farther away from the blade. So you kind of, kind of adjust it as best you can in the planting position. Okay, that's better. So now I can hold this and tighten. And I may have it just a touch tight, but that's not too bad. So that's where I want it. So well, that side's good. Now we do this side. This side's a little trickier just because of the way the thread's the direction. But it's the same process. All right. Now, it occurs to me I should probably explain to you how these gauge wheels work and what exactly it is that they do, right? So you can see that they run alongside of our seed openers and they pivot up and down, okay? Well, this is a big flat surface and it is going to ride on the ground. So the ground is under here and when you set the planter down, this wheel rides up, the opener blades go below it and they cut the trench in the dirt for the seed. Now, what stops them from going up and down? Well. If you look right in here, you can see this little 
they call it an eyebrow clip or it's a gauge wheel stop is what it is and it pivots it's a uh, kind of a walking gauge wheel they call it so it can move one way or the other but when these arms come up they hit that right hold on so when i push up on those uh, gauge wheels they hit it and as i push one up the other one goes down that way it follows the ground really well but the other thing you'll notice is this handle here well this handle it moves how far that those wheels are allowed to pivot so if i move that way up there now i can't push them up very far which means that my blades aren't sticking very far below it can't even hardly tell so that means we plant shallower and if i pull this handle up and i move it way down here now i can push those gauge wheels way up and our blades stick way down below them and we plant super deep we don't want to plant that deep so you can see where our wear spots are the spots that we actually run this most of the time it looks like it's about right there and that gives us our inch and three quarters to two inches in depth now as the as the openers wear you've got to adjust this and we'll run it a little deeper maybe like maybe like that but that's how they work so they they ride up those arms ride up and they they hit on this piece here to control their depth that piece moves with this handle something like that all right so i decided on this first row where it had the worst um of those gauge arms after i drop everything here that I'm gonna put the two new uh, John Deere style ones that I had because I have them and I have them so I might as well use them. So um, they're pretty easy to change. Basically we take the gauge wheel off. Like that. And then uh, there's some spacers in there. Don't lose those. We can pretty well throw that one away. And then we put the new one back on. But I'm going to clean it first. Okay, and then this piece threads into there, and we'll get it adjusted. We've got to get a greaser and put in there. It can't ever be easy. Why can't they ever just make stuff easy? This this hole, it's not threaded. So I don't know if they use a press fit greaser in there, in which case it should come already press fit in there, or if I'm supposed to tap it, but that's what we're going to do because... I have threaded grease zerks. I don't have press fit grease zerks. Frustrating. I took the grease zerks out of the old arms and they don't appear to be really threaded either. But they had threaded grease zerks, which makes me think that they're like a spin it in self tapper kind of thing. There's what their goal is. Man, this camera does not focus like my old one did. <sighs> so I'm doing that. I cleaned it up. And we're gonna just try and spin it into the hole. Not really straight, but it went in, so it'll do its job. Okay, well, I got half of the gauge wheels all adjusted to this side of the planter. I got to do the other side yet. Uh, Brock and I were just looking at these chains and seeing what we got to do to them. Uh, just clean them up and lubricate them a little bit. They're really not too bad. I try not to use sticky lubricants. 
on the chains on my planner. Phil likes to use some spray lube stuff on his, but I've got some dry film that I put on that keeps them cleaner so they don't attract dust and dirt, and uh, I like that much better. So they're not really that dirty, but we're going to lube them up anyway. Um, yeah. And then I think maybe this afternoon we're going to try and take some of these closing wheels apart. They all have to come apart to get the rings replaced on them, and a lot of them got that wear here that we got to replace the half anyway so um we'll maybe start taking them apart although i don't expect my parts to be here till at least the middle of the week for the new ones so and we should be able to get our closing wheel frames all the rest of them put back together we had to paint some more here this morning so we're waiting for the paint to dry well look there's a whole pile of closing wheels taken apart here and you can see the wear on them much more significantly now that they are part um, so like for example this wheel uh, look at this side okay compared to this side I put them side by side so you can see look that's all wear those two started out identical which is why we're seeing this where they're chipping off so um, basically half of every wheel is going to get replaced um, some of them aren't wore through yet but they're thin so i don't know we'll look at them i guess i could re reverse them um that would probably be sufficient on some of those so anyway um brock has got these ooh, are, they, are they still wet brock yes. all right well we're still waiting for those to dry but they were able to move them out of the way so uh he's washing meters and we got a few of them back together nice and tight just like the bean planter I'm working on getting the other half of the planter, the uh, gauge wheels, adjusted here. And I really don't like how tight those are getting. I mean, it's there's supposed to be a gap in there, and some of them are worse than others. This one wasn't so bad, but I don't know if these gauge wheels are worn, the openers are worn, a combination of all of it. There's really not that much slop in this one. That's probably just a little tight. It should drop back down. But I don't know. problem is that if that gauge wheel gets tight in here then instead of spinning on the bushing it's gonna loosen that bolt up or yeah they're a pain that's why the other styles are better but i don't these aren't wore out they're not horribly bad um yeah i gotta loosen it up a little bit but that's that's why some of them with the shim type like on our other planner are a little bit easier to adjust and keep an adjustment Okay, I've got the gauge wheels adjusted. Brock's putting tail pieces back on, closing wheels. I'm going to spray down our uh, chains, lube them up a little bit. I've got some of this stuff. It's a uh, synthetic dry film lubricant, and it works pretty good. I like it. It may not be the most lubricating stuff ever compared to, you know, a, a, a oil or a chain lube or whatever, but it dries and therefore does not attract dirt. And if you can keep the dirt out of these, they last a lot longer. So we'll spray them down good. You can see what I oversprayed there, and it's nice and slick, so. All right, so we're putting these uh, closing frames back together here, and I got a question off after the bean planter about um, uh, the, that the bearings look good and everything, but how do you uh, center them and adjust them for side to side centering over the row because I think some of the older John Deere planters um, they actually had a cam or an eccentric in here that you had to turn to uh, uh, adjust the, the angle of them I guess um, these are different the newer John Deere planters don't have that so um, the holes on this tailpiece that mounts up there are slotted and so when you put those bolts in there and because it's that slotted and this is tapered here, um, it, I can move it quite a lot side to side. So the goal here is to kind of center it in the holes and then center it side to side as best you can. And that puts it in the right spot. So uh, there's plenty of adjustment there, clearly. I decided I better check the oil level in my uh, gearbox on the fertilizer pump. I'm pretty sure it should be running out that hole. Let me take the plug out. It is not. Although it's not quite level, so that would affect it some, but we're just gonna, 
we're just gonna put it in there until it starts coming out the hole. All right, I got that filled up. It took a fair amount, actually, which I'm a little surprised by. Okay, now I'm stable, not gonna fall. Um, the other thing I'm noticing on this pump is we're missing a couple of bolts here. And I don't know, I don't know how we're missing those bolts. I can't help but think maybe I took them out of there for some reason and didn't put them back. Probably thinking, ah, I'll take them off and not put them back in. Then I'll remember that I need to do something with it. I should go back and watch the video when I clean this up and put it away. Maybe I said that exact thing in that video, but I don't know why. I know that I had some trouble with these gears last year and I had to rotate this one 180 degrees and I put a new one on down there, the small one. I'm pretty sure I replaced it. I know I got one and that one looks to be in pretty good shape. So I think it's the new one. Um, so I'm gonna find some bolts that fit in there and tighten that thing down and hope that it works right. Those gears are super expensive. I remember that. Like, that big gear was like 400 bucks or something, so that's why we rotated it and didn't replace it. Okay, I think my pump is good to go. I'm just kind of checking the rest of the fertilizer system out or the delivery side of it. These two hoses here, the big one, this one is the fill. It comes up here into this T and goes up into uh, my tank on the planter. This is just a little 300 gallon tank. Um, I've put this electric ball valve on there so that I can turn that on and shut it off um, based on when I need that stuff that's in there or not. So um, I'm only putting one type of fertilizer on. It's a, it's a uh, you know, we've talked about my fertilizer blend, starter blend. Uh, we put it on with our two by two fertilizer openers here. Um, but I pull a tank, right? So I pull that uh, 1600 gallon tank behind the planter. The 300 gallon tank on uh, on the planter gives me in 1900 gallons of holding. Um, I don't hardly ever use that much, but it's nice to have some on the planter to help balance the weight a little bit better and to um, plant some without pulling the tank. Like when I'm doing my test plots and stuff, uh, I can still put fertilizer on. I think I can do like 15 or 20 acres with just what's on the planter. So um, anyway, I need this valve to shut that off. Otherwise it would overflow when my back tank is super full or when things are getting empty, this would run empty and then it would start sucking air and I would lose my prime. By having this electric valve, I can turn that on and off from the seat of the tractor and not have to get out and turn the valve manually and just keep moving. And then I even wired it up with this little remote control box that I bought from Tractor Supply. It, uh, it's meant for turning like little lawn and garden sprayer pumps on and off when you're spraying your lawn and you don't wanna have to get off your lawnmower seat. But it works really good because it comes with a little remote control so I can use it from the seat or I can use it when I'm filling. So like when I'm filling fertilizer from our, our dikes, I always hook up in the back or on my tank side of it. And then I can open this valve, watch it full, fill. And then when this tank gets full, I can just hit the button on my thing and it'll start pushing it all into my uh, tank that I'm pulling. So that works pretty well. I do remember having a little bit of issues with this last year where I would have to unplug it and reset it. So I want to test it out. I may have to buy a new box. They're like 30 bucks. It ain't no big deal. They last two or three years and you buy a new one and replace it. Here's my little remote control. I took all the connections apart, wired them up. You can see the lights on now. That's because I turned the key on on the tractor. You got to have the key on to get power back here. Uh, that loomed wire just goes back under the center frame there and there was a, a 12 volt power supply un, unconnected plug that was just there for power so i use that so when i hit this button it opens the valve pretty fancy right yeah works good i put the uh, wire in there so that I could see it from the cab of the tractor. It used to have a flag on it. That was seven or eight years ago though. So at some point we need to take the filter apart and make sure that's all clean and everything in there, but uh, we've got RV antifreeze in there and I don't really want to drain it all out, so I'm not gonna do that until spring. Anyway, so after we fill our tank and then when we want to empty it, we open this valve and then it goes this way and I've got a valve here to shut that off. Uh, if necessary, because when I need to clean that uh, filter out, if I don't have a valve, it will drain the whole tank. So we shut that valve and open that up anyway. Uh, but it goes back through there and it comes back 
uh, through that smaller hose. This one's inch and a half, this one's two, and it goes back over to our pump there. So fairly simple on that end. Our parts came, we got some closing wheel halves and those arms that we needed for the fertilizer stuff so we can finish those fertilizer discs. I believe this is our hub, so we'll do that. Well, it turns out I misread the parts diagram a little bit and uh, the box that I thought included everything was cut out around a couple of pieces. So I'm gonna have to get a little bit more to get that one back together, but we can put the gauge wheel on the far one down there, clear on the other end, the one that was bent when we took it off right here and uh when i did this last week and i was having trouble getting them apart and you all were yelling at me for not never season stuff when i put it back together and how much trouble that would save me i will have you know that i never seize these shafts every single year they come apart and get redone i'm sure if you would like i can go back and find the video where i did this last year it would have been sometime in February or March. So, we never seize it up. Annie sees, never sees, whatever you want to call it. Silver shiny stuff that gets on your hands and doesn't ever come off. <clears throat> and then we put it back in there. And it usually spins pretty free when you first put it on. And then it seizes up gradually over the course of the spring. So, just so you know, it is, it is on there. All right, well, we're making progress here on this planter. Um, things are, are moving right along. Big thing left is closing wheels, and it's going to be a few days before I get what I need to do those. So, um, we're kind of at a standstill here a little bit, I guess. Meters can go back on at some point, but that won't take much. So, and we got to grease it. Um, but there's really not a whole lot left. This one closing, or this one fertilizer disc and uh, closing wheels. So that's a good thing. Um, Brock won't be back until Thursday. The next couple of days here, I might do some running around. So there may or may not be a video. It may be one for both days kind of thing, just because I don't know how much more I'm going to be around uh, doing stuff in the shop or have anything to film. So I may spend some time doing some... Uh, uh, yield maps or uh, prescription maps, that kind of stuff. Keep working on that, but I've been trying to do a little bit here and there. So we'll see. And I need to go check in with some seed customers at some point too. So we're going to go and do that this week. Um, but yeah, things are moving right along. So questions, comments, leave them down below and uh, we'll see you guys sometime. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it.